it is time for Spiraling Inward. We have Mike Rayleigh on the phone. He's got some amazing new music for you to hear, and we're going to talk to him and find out what's going on inside his bean. Hey, Mike, you want to say hi to the listeners? Hey, guys. How's it going? Yeah, they've been waiting for this. I've been pumping this for, like, days. So everyone's really excited, and I'm really excited, too, because, really, I've known you for quite a while, but I've never really, you know, got to ask you all the questions that I wanted to ask you. Like, especially since I hear... Wait, mommy. <laughs> cool. I hear, like, all your different sounds, like, through the years. You've done a bunch of different things. We're going to be featuring some of your solo stuff tonight that's coming out on... When is uh, those these Octonal Oz going to come out? So it's going to come out this Friday, which is March 4th. And I have a song on there called Peaceful Soldier, which is funny. You know, it has a line about marching. So, <laughs> you know, throw those visualizations together. Pretty cool. So, like, yeah, we're getting all of these, a lot of these songs before they're even out in the world, which is super rad. Thanks, man. But, like, yeah, I want to go oh, deeper, way deeper tonight. Like, when did you really start writing music? I know you had a pretty cool sort of new punk band and you had an alt band and now you've got this project but where did it all start i mean that's all i really know but let's go deep when did you start playing music what was your first yeah. instrument um first instrument was guitar it was when i was about 11 about to turn 12 when i got it but i didn't really get into it until i got guitar hero 3 and then <laughs> there's a song called close to dover by eric johnson and i was like oh my gosh, you can make a guitar sound like that. And then, um, like, from that point, I really, really wanted to learn, like, how to play that song, but also just how that works and how you make a guitar sing, you know what I mean? Yeah, for um, sure. So, yeah, uh, I would say, like, I tried starting writing songs, like, very early, and nothing of real worth other than making it on my task and for track and uploading it to SoundCloud uh, came out. But um, I joined a punk band, or like a pop punk band, in 2010, like, you know, when I was 15, called The Supporting Cast, and I got into it by um, playing the entire EP in front of the guitarist when I was hanging out with the singer that I knew um, from a previous thing, but um, I had never been in a band before, and I just, like, nerded out on these songs, and I played them note for note. And he was so impressed, he, like, let me be the lead guitarist for the band Ace. so I could fill out their shows. <laughs> and then I just kind of went from there and started learning how to, like, find riffs in, you know, like, power chord arrangements and stuff. Yeah, I really like that. I love those guys. I think I play them a lot on my show, too, for reals. And uh, I think it's fantastic awesome. how you, like, approach music and, yeah, knowing that you've been to the kind of, like, new punk thing and the alt thing and now you're doing your indie I would call it like new indie esque music with your solo project. Yeah. I dig that. And still kinda of struggling with like, you know, finding the exact genre because genres are so funny now. It's there's indie rock, there's indie pop, there's indie alternative, <laughs> there's indie just straight up and then there's also like chill wave and dream pop and all these things that are kind of like it but not exactly. Yeah, and that makes your music so much more amazing to me because, yeah, it definitely defies description. I make up my own <laughs> genres for things, too. You know, like, I'm sure there's a billion DJs out there that do the same thing. They decide, like, you know, what some of these bands are going to be called, like it or not, people. It's what we do. We kind of, like, we define, we define it. We say what's going on. And, yeah, it's all unique and I don't know what to call you, but what I do know is that I dig it. And you're talking about like task scam in it and, you know, back in the day. And you know what I saw recently? There's this really cool new technology out. It's like a guitar. Have you seen the Lava 3 Me guitar? No. Oh my I gosh. You were going to say like, uh, like the Omnicord or something, but you said new, so that wouldn't make sense. Of course, yeah. What I'm is talking... the Lava guitar? It's super awesome. Um, Y'all check it out. It, they're out there. I've got little ads everywhere to describe what this fantastic piece of equipment does. But basically, it does everything that you would want to do to have your own band 
inside this one guitar. I mean, everything. It has an amplifier. Oh, it plays fun. music. It actually records your music. It plays your music. It adds effects. So, like, you're completely eliminating all of the thousand, six thousand pedals that you could have um, in front of you. And it's just like this all in one music maker. And I'm not the best that's at sweet. guitar. It's totally rad. And that's why I brought it up. I just think it's super fantastic. And I want to encourage. Any of the artists that are out there thinking that, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, sink all this money into all this, and it might not even be that amazing. But, like, you know, give it a try. Get out there and make some music. And it's just getting easier and easier right now, especially with this new Lava guitar. I like the Lava 3 Me. There's a bunch of different ones. Maybe it's Me 3. Lava Me 3. Yeah, and there's a different bunch of different varieties. But check it out. Do a little Google search and check out these guitars. They're so amazing. And like everything's built in. It's very futuristic. and But it just looks like an acoustic guitar, really. But um, they have an actual touch screen on the top where you can do all of, you know, your tech. You're, like I said, you're looping, you're recording, you have effects and volume, and on top of it, it has an amp that's going to play your music. And it's pretty amazing. I love it. And, yeah, I thought I'd just put that out there because uh, I want more people. Totally. And new tech is, you know, it comes and goes. And not a lot of things are, like, catch my eye because, to me, it's all just, like, they're reworking something I've seen a billion times before. It's like another pedal with another name, you know. It's another recording unit, blah, blah, blah. But, like, yeah, this really caught my eye. And, and I want to just, like I said, encourage y'all who are interested in making music and thinking that, you know, you don't have enough cash to, like, make it happen. You know, it's not that expensive. Maybe, like, one of their models was, like, $300, and that's really not a whole lot. Like, if you were even going to buy uh, a regular axe, it's going to be, like, up in there. So, yeah, I just want to want to encourage y'all to make it happen with that. And so, yeah, I like that. So what did you use? Did you record your entire new solo album by yourself? Yes, I did all the production on it. Um, I did it all in my home studio except for the drums, which I recorded at the drummer's parents' house. <laughs> Which is a funny story because um, I found out when I was doing that that he lived or grew up on the same street and like same neighborhood that inspired one of the songs that we're playing today. Super cool. Which is Houses Money People. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, I've never heard it until like uh, you sent me the links to all these, and I've been listening to it a bunch. It's surely one of my favorites, and we're actually going to close the interview with that. The first track that I picked to play for the evening is going to be Lumberjack, which was kind of like the first song I heard of your solo stuff, and I loved it so much, and so did everybody else, and especially Rivers Cuomo. I think that's ultra fantastic that he heard your song and gave you two thumbs up. How'd you feel about that? That was uh, my favorite story about that song by far. I mean, like, I wrote that in, like, the second batch, and it didn't exactly fit the same way as the other songs, but I threw it in because it, I just really love the concept of it, and uh, the way I wrote it was so much fun, uh, and I really like the riff, so I threw it in there, and uh, when I was uploading the Most of Rivers website, basically, uh, he, you know, like, didn't that song didn't come through, so I asked about it, um, and he happened to listen to it on Prompted, and I was on lunch when that happened at my job, getting Qdoba, and, like, I look at the River Chat, which is, like, on its website at the time, and, like, everybody's like, oh, my gosh, Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> you can't actually tag people, so I wasn't getting notified. I just happened to check, and they were like, Rivers was just here, and he said he loved your song. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, so I had to read back, and then I said, oh, my gosh, thanks, and then I went back uh, to work, and then, it's, like, four minutes later, he came back, and he was like, Mike, I like Lumberjack. <laughs> it was funny with the timing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, how long have you liked Weezer? Um, I, you know, since at least 2005, I, you know, was hearing all rock on just the radio and stuff, and I'm sure I had already... I, I liked Beverly, the Beverly Hills when it came out, and I had heard Island in the Sun. But when the Red Album came out, 2008, I actually saw it in a Target, and I already liked the band from hearing it on the radio, and the Pork and Beans uh, single had just gone on to original YouTube and, like, absolutely blown up, because it was just, like, an homage to all the original memes and videos. 
Um, and I remember watching that, like, at my friend's house, because we didn't have internet, and, uh, you know, we were just so into it. We watched it over and over, and I uh, saw the Red Album at Target, decided to get the Deluxe Edition, which was a great decision Indeed. in retrospect. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of the history of that. I, I just played that. that one on repeat for multiple years. Didn't really follow them for a bit until everything will be all right, and then I've kind of stuck with them since. That's cool. I love your story, and I love the fact that you were, like, right in there on the ground floor when Red came out, because <laughs> I've, I've been a Reason fan since, like, the very beginning, you know, since 94, I saw them live and everything, and I love them, but uh, there, was a lot that, there was a lot of action that came out in 2008, like, about three records were popping, and it went below my radar, Red. Can you believe that? It completely went below my radar. I was not wow. I was not an avid YouTuber or anything. I wasn't, like, checking that out. I had, you know, a pretty intense life doing radio, of course, caretaking up on a mountain house, Definitely. which had no internet also, same. So I was really kind of disconnected, you know, by living in the chateau in the middle of nowhere. And then I started doing this radio show here in town and um, I guess it was 2016, maybe late 2016. And uh, I just happened to see Red. And I've seen Red before. I saw memes of Red, but I really thought it was a joke. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're like, oh, this actually exists. Yeah, totally. Uh, let me see what this is. Yeah, full on. And so, like, I had, I was prepping to do, you know, start my show, to do my very first show. And I, I had ordered it because, you know, I discovered it finally. And I was like, oh, fun. And then um, I got it the very first day for my show i had it and i was stoked and without listening to it because i just got it It was in the mail i took it to the radio station and literally unboxed it and uh threw it in the player and i was like oh the angel and the one i like the sound of that and uh, i played it. it was the first song i ever played here on melting space dreams at kxcj oh, and uh it ruined my whole show <laughs> i was oh, so gosh. sad and so emotional after I played that, because it's a pretty intense song, and it talks about, you know, a lot of stuff that is sensitive to my heart. And I was just yeah, like... Yeah, that's still one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, for sure. The um, I know, one. like, some people don't like it so much, but I just, I really enjoy songs like that. Same. I loved it, and uh, but yeah, it really, it knocked me for a loop. <laughs> and the whole rest of the show, I was just kind of, like, weepy and trying to, like, hold it together, because, you know, this is my very first show here at right. KXCJ, yeah, and I no, won't... That would have been a really hard hit. <laughs> it really like, was. I listen to that. I always listen, I still do this to this day, but I always start from track one, and I just go for it. And, um, you know, like, by the end of that album... Uh, you're hit with so many like different directions that uh, it's such a great closer. But I guess I was slightly more prepared mm -hmm. for something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, fully. Anyway. I didn't even. But, there was, you know. Yeah, I do. Lots of tears, but that's all. <laughs> Definitely, I feel it. I felt it, and I still do. Every time I listen to it, I feel those emotions. They wash back upon me. But like yeah, back then. We didn't even have a board that allowed me to preview songs. We had no cue back then, so uh, there was none of that wow. to happen. But I really wanted to give it a go because it just, like, I loved the name, the angel and the one. We're going to have to play that later. I'm going to have to roll that out. But uh, before we even get there, it's coming up on 915 here in Southern Oregon, and what I like to do when I do these spiraling inward segments is chat for a while and then play a song, and 15 minutes seems like good. So we're going to play our very first track here. It's called it's a Lumberjack song. I love it. And do you have anything to say before I play it, Mike? Um, get your axes sharpened. <laughs> Excellent. Salvage 
that cold deck Watch for widowmakers Grab you right by the neck Skid Row needs a trimmer Yeah, that was Mike Rayleigh's Lumberjack. And we've got this guy on the phone right now, and we're talking about stuff and things. So do you know any Lumberjacks, man? Um, <laughs> I know people who are woodworkers who are, like, good with, like, making, say, chairs and cabinets and, like, handymen with wood. But I don't know if I know people who are paid. Oh. Well, I know Marjolaine <laughs> works in a paper factory. <laughs> That's, That's kind of the closest thing. <laughs> totally. Well, here in Southern Oregon, we have so many loggers. And uh, the first time I played that song, I got so many calls. People were tripping. They loved it. So you've got a huge fan base here in Southern Oregon with all of the loggers because they're lumberjacks, you know, and uh, they yeah. love your song. They love this song for sure. So like, so what was your what was your first job as a musician? Did you ever like have a real like music job except like writing music, like going to do live shows? Like, what was that? Well, so I've never been like paid by the hour per se, but uh, like uh, I would say my first like legit gig with music would be like playing in the supporting cast, which happened from when I was fifteen to when like just after I turned nineteen. So like, three and a half years, um, and we did, like, two EPs while I was in the band, and we were working on a full-length album, and by that time, I was starting to write more and more stuff. Yeah. So that's pretty young. So, like, did your mom and dad support what you were doing, or are they like, dude, go to college, get a real job? Um, my family's always been really musical. My granddad on my mother's side uh, was actually, like, a pretty successful uh, steel guitarist, like, way back in the day, like, on, like, live radio, like, in the, <laughs> like, I guess the 50s, the 60s, like, a lot of that era. Cool. Um, played a lot of trailer, uh, like, shows, you know, when they would get those, like, 18-wheelers that are open tops with just the tops. Heck, yeah. Back when those... Like, concerts were really, like, the thing. You know? It's crazy. We still do that here in Oregon. There's actually a place in um, close by. It's not exactly Oregon. It's a Weed, California. And uh, they have this festival once a year, and all of the different acts play in 
cars, you know, like train cars. And they're kind of like, they're not even really modified. They just have, radical. it's awesome. It's so fantastic. They have, you know, the doors flung open and a lot of them have hay on the ground. But yeah, that was a pretty cool gig. Last time I went, there was uh, the dudes from Metallica. I don't know. They also do this like country act. It's kind of like new country ish. And uh, it's awesome. I forgot the name of it, but I didn't think I'd be talking about this. But here I am. I'm not prepared. But yeah, if you Google it, you'll find out that two dudes from uh, Metallica have like a kind of country band. And they were amazing. And it was awesome to see them. And I liked what they were wearing. They were They had on really country shirts you know like cowboy shirts and cowboy hats but the details were so metal they had like you know they had little the little buttons that would normally be like pearly buttons on like an actual cowboy they are they were cowboys they were metal cowboys but their little pearly buttons had like skull and crossbones on them and where they would have the um, beautiful flowers that are on the yoke of the shirt that are embroidered they would have like roses and skulls and it was so rad i loved that that was you know that was a pretty cool one and there were lots of really great bands there but definitely they stuck out um among all of the other ones that was pretty incredible but like yeah they're still doing that stuff so anyway <laughs> let me interject and like stop your story so when you when you were doing all your live music what was your favorite thing like something happened and you were just like this is what i want to do for the rest of my life um, I don't know exactly when I made that decision. I had already, like, before I even got in the band, I was like, wow, I really, really like this music thing, and I want to pursue it. Um, and then when I got in the band, like, people were very, very encouraging. Like, I guess they didn't think a 15-year-old could, like, outdo a grown man on guitar or whatever. And, like, they were just blown away that I could play the things that I could. I, I guess there was, like, a certain novelty aspect, but, like, um... People were just so very encouraging, and they were like, you're going to be a rock star, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And at a certain point, I was like, you know, like, that would be sweet. But, um, so I I took a break for a few years, like, after that band broke up. Um, but, you know, I've never gotten away from it. I've always played. Um, but I took a break as far as writing goes, and I just can't shake the bug. And... I, when I was doing music classes, you know, it just started coming up again, and I wanted to write more stuff, and I learned a lot more, and I don't know, it's been kind of snowballing ever since, like, say, 2017. Super fantastic. Now, when you went to school, was that, like, college or, like, high school? What school yeah. are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And I, uh, like, I started in 2017, and I kind of took a break starting in, uh, like, 2020, which... I took the break before COVID and everything happened. It was just, like, really incredibly odd timing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so, like, I just haven't been encouraged to go back because things have been <laughs> weird since then, you know. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of time, like, uh, you couldn't even go use, say, the studios at the college, which I feel like that's a lot of what my point of being there is, is to actually work the knobs and understand how the boards work and stuff. Yeah, that's where the magic is, for sure. Knowing, like, what slot to put your drums on and what slot to have your guitar on and how to blend it all together, for reals. I like that. And if you were to encourage someone who wants to pursue a future in music, what would you suggest to them as far as, you know, making, sort of forging their path? Well, find something that feels right. Like, you know, um, first of all, there's not a whole bunch of money in music. So if you're looking for that, you could probably just be an accountant or a lawyer or something. <laughs> but if you're looking to, like, have a lot of self-fulfillment and you want to, at the very least, casually put out songs that you're proud about, which is something I feel like may, a lot more people should do. Like, I know a lot of musical people that I try to actively goad into being like, oh, my gosh, these songs that you shared with me privately are great. You should put them out, X, Y, Z, you know, like. Um, but, uh, I would say, you know, follow your heart, write songs that inspire you. And if you're not even picking up an instrument yet, like ways to figure that out are like, are you always beating your chest to a song? Are you always singing along? You know, like, are you air guitaring on your steering wheel? Like, what are you doing? Just kind of like go naturally where something feels right. And 
there's always ways to try out things in an inexpensive way, I would feel. You, most people at this point have a friend who has a guitar, if nothing else. Be like, hey, can I pick that up real fast? I just want to do something. Yeah, totally. That's you know, awesome. Go for it. That's awesome advice. And there's definitely a theme tonight. Well, I think there's always a theme in Melting Space Dreams about following your heart because it totally is important. If your heart is in money, yeah, music might not be the way to go. But yeah, following your heart is important. And the path that our heart forges are all completely unique. And just because you don't want to be a rocker, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're any worse or better than the next guy, you know, because everything we do is unique in our lives and we can craft our existence to exactly how we'd like it. And I dig that about life. A lot of people feel like they're locked into situations because of this or that. But if you really want to follow your heart, it might be it might be scary. It might you might have a little bit of fear, but it's always worth it to take that step and look on the horizon where your heart is shining the rainbow and follow it because you're never going to go wrong if you follow your heart. Just a little bit of Sefia Didwick advice for you. And yeah, speaking of advice, <laughs> thank you very much for yeah. offering that. That was super insightful. And I also like the idea that there's always a guitar center out there. You know, you can pick up a guitar there and uh, they don't mind. They'll show you what's going on and there's a lot more there. That's than... very true. Like, there's lots of places, like, that's another place you can just go for free and touch, like, really cool, like, hopefully in tune guitars. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, ready to go. And they have more than guitars, too. You know, they've got keyboards there. they got drums there. And I've always loved to go there and just, like, hang out. And the most amazing part also is the knowledge that all of the different employees seem to have. They seem to only, like, hire people that are, like, know what's going on. And I like that about those kind of places. So, yeah, there's got to be a music store close by you. Hop in there and... You know, don't be afraid. Don't let fear stop you. You know, fear stops a lot of people, but, you know, nobody wants you to, nobody wants to make you feel bad. Nobody wants to have fear, but, you know, we all do. But to realize that alone, you also know that people don't want to make you feel that fear. They want to teach you. They want to welcome you, especially people with skills. There ain't nobody in the world <laughs> that's more like willing to share with you than somebody with mad skills, and they will. They will. And uh, we're coming around the 930 zone, and I want to remind y'all that you're listening to KXCJLP 105.7 FM, sailing our signal out of Cave Junction, Oregon. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, yeah, and universally, of course, at kxcj.org, 105.7 FM. And I have another song to play by Mike Grayley. This is called Fell Flat. There's a brand new video out to match this song, and I love it. It's fantastic. And uh, I love the video, dude. Um, super fantastic. Do you want to, like, lead in with anything before I play Fell Flat? Sure. Um, yeah, check out the video if you're listening. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's on YouTube under my name, Mike Rayleigh Bell Flat. Um, just a whole bunch of VHS retro filters, and I fall in the snow a whole bunch of times. <laughs> um, the lyrics are always, like, it's a super short song, and it's, like, a little bit silly in the premise, so I just decided to run with it with the video, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I love the video, and here we go. This is Fell Flat by Mike Rayleigh. In my melting space dreams, here we go, live with Mike Riley. Here's Fell Flat.
trying, I've been trying so hard. Skipping stairs, launching out the front door. Keyed ignition, kickstart the old car. Engine's broken, keep trying what for. You know, we all fall every now and again. And the cool thing about it is it teaches us when we fall, when we fail. It gives us a great opportunity to learn because once you fall on your face, you don't really want to do it again. So you examine what's happening and uh, you don't you don't want to do it again. And you don't, you learn. I love that about failing. A lot of people aren't really down with failing, but I welcome a good fail because you never really learn so much as you do when you fumble. Am I correct, Mike? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to, uh, the whole point of the song is kind of like, uh, you got to fall. Like, that's just going to happen. Failure is a key component of, of success, but also um, the biggest part of the fall is how you get up afterwards. So true. I love that. I really dig that about your music. Did you ever have a complete like <laughs> a complete fail and be like, "Dang!" And what did it teach you? Well, um, yes, lots of times. <laughs> depending on the context you're talking about, just. As an example, I've fallen <laughs> and broken things on my body twice. Um, once in 2017, and I almost died on a waterfall. And then yeah. also, uh, about a year and a half ago, I messed up my shoulder uh, skateboarding in like a very silly accident that was much less high stakes, but still messed up my collarbone. Um, but anyway, uh, like, you know, like failures everywhere. Um, I've had lots of bands that never did their first show. I've had lots of jobs that never saw me go longer than like two months. Didn't work out. You know, I've, <laughs> this is my second attempt going through college. You know, it's just failure is part of life. Exactly. I totally agree with you. That's super fantastic. Definitely. So now we're looking at the future. You have an album coming out on Friday, which is ultra fantastic. And you pretty much wrote everything yourself and played everything yourself and even recorded it yourself, which is super ace. But what do you think about the future with your solo? Are you going to like adopt a band? Are you going to go on tour and have recorded stuff that you're going to play? What, what are you thinking about? I really want to do shows at some point in the near-ish future. I just don't have a band right at my fingertips. Um, but I've always loved playing live shows, especially since, you know, playing in the band when I uh, started at 15. Like, I just got the bug, and, uh, like, I just feel like I thrive on stage. And mm. uh, it's also one of the best ways to still make money uh, as a musician. I really want to do that. But also, as far as projects go, um, I have ideas for, like, the next uh, thing I want to put out is probably going to be a piano EP or just, like, a very small collection of songs based on one that I like a lot called Pontna. Um, but, like, you know, I, I have kind of a vision going forward, and I'm just working with what I got right now and what I have is me. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's great. I always wonder about that. That makes me curious to know how people, bands, go forward when they're solo projects and they want to play live. And 
a lot of like a couple of weeks ago i talked to this dude and he was like yeah i got everything recorded i just go up there and i press play and it's basically just me singing and doing a little bit of guitar and then a couple of weeks before that i was speaking with uh, lulu lewis and her whole project and they were just like we get bands we get live music we get live musicians that's the only way to go so yeah there's a lot of varieties and people are pretty much musicians are doing you know what works with them and a lot of people want more people on stage with them they want like backing musicians but other people don't so i'm always really curious about that so like i definitely feel like having the people is the ideal situation for me but uh you know like i've been debating like oh do i try to do a couple shows with just backing track but it doesn't feel the same right whereas um it's weird though because you know there's just all these weird social barriers we have. Um, doing a live stream concert, I I have a much lower bar of entry because I'm running it myself. I am planning on doing like a couple live stream concerts where Yay. I have the rest of the album as backing tracks minus like the main guitar and vocals, so I can do a live concert, so to speak. Well, dude, you do a live concert every Sunday over there in Mr. River's neighborhood. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't imagine, like, I was actually, you know how you, like, you think you ask somebody something, and you're like, oh, yeah, I know what he's going to say. But I'm like, oh, I'm beside myself because I never imagined that you would really think that you needed a band. Because, yeah, this guy, every Sunday at, um, now it's a Discord server. I'm so, like, back in the day, it used to be called Mr. River's Neighborhood. Now it's just, like... Rivers Cuomo's Discord server, and you can check it out there on Discord. Anybody can join. It's pretty awesome, and yeah, it's fun. And the perk of it would be on Sundays, and uh, I'm not sure what time it is. You know, <laughs> it's a different time for me than it is for this guy. But it used to be at one in the afternoon. Here, you can go in there, and they have a little. He has his own little channel, and he does an amazing job. And pretty much, he just does. Weezer covers and sort of like collabs and things, you know, Weezer collabs. And then once a month, there's actually a concert where all of the neighbors that want to be in there and play their music and share their stuff can uh, do their thing. I really dig that. And it really impresses me. And I'm thoroughly excited about, you know, you doing some more live things. Will they be on your website? Um, Do you have a little channel for that on there? I do have um, a website, and I think I have the ability to do live streams. Um, you know, right now, it's it's such a weird thing, but long story short, it's so hard to convince anybody who's on a web, like, say, say, Facebook to get off of Facebook to even go to YouTube to click the video. Like, if you upload a Facebook video or a YouTube video and they're the same thing, like, if you do a Facebook status and it's a, the video shared mm-hmm. versus a YouTube link... <laughs> People are going to be clicking the Facebook one because it auto plays. There's just all these little subtle things, but uh, you know, uh, I'll be putting it on. I haven't decided yet, but YouTube is very, very solid as a platform, and Facebook is too, as far as connection goes, and you can do a lot of cool interaction. I wish I could do it to both. If I could, I would. I'll check it out. But, well, uh, hey, let it'll me be like my YouTube or my Facebook. Yeah, I think you can. The way you can really rock it both is like different devices i've seen a few musicians do that in the past where they're doing lives and they have lives all over the social media platforms because they just have you know different devices that are on each different platform recording their live performance which is pretty fun because uh, you know they're looking at this phone or they're looking at this tablet or they're looking at this camera you know and it gives it's just it's such an awesome thing i really love that so you know get yourself a bunch of friends who have a like a load of devices and you can cover like every streaming platform simultaneously. I'd love that. So like when you're not writing music and you're not coding your own website, which is, is it Mike Rayleigh.com? Is that your website? Correct. Yeah. And also for listeners out there, this is how you spell my name. R A I L E Y. It's like Bailey, but with an R. <laughs> That's the easy way to remember. Super cool. Um, but yeah, like I don't code the website. I just kind of threw it together from like so, like a quick t- thing. But you know, I can customize it. Um, so what else do I do? Um, I like you know being active when I can. You know, to a limited amount. I really like riding my bike and <laughs> taking walks. Um, I also like. Um, you know, getting into random things. 
I learned how to screen print last year to do the merch for the stuff. Um, I love playing video games. play a lot of Fortnite with my uh, my sister, uh, who lives in Little Rock, as well as my girlfriend. And, you know, we, like, make it a uh, thing to party and kind of hang out together Eight. in that way. You know, just kind of random things. And so, like... What kind of food are you interested in? Do you ever, like, make anything? Do you ever go in the kitchen and, like, whip something oh, up? food? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm vegetarian. I have been for, like, a uh, long time. Whatever. Um, like, 11 years. Um, and I like making uh, lots of things with beans and cheese. Cheese is, like, <laughs> my guilty pleasure. I have it all the time. Yeah, it's cheese. Lovely. Cheese is amazing. Um, That's but, what keeps me from being a vegan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like to do that. It's something I really dig myself. So I always like to ask what kind of food people like and if they make it, you know, people, a lot of people in the world, they don't get like how much fun it is to actually create something from scratch. Everyone's going out here, going out to there to eat. And I'm like, "Mm -hmm, that's cool, but whatever. When I want something that I'm curious about and I don't exactly know how to make, like say once I had it at a diner in like, you know, 92, like, yeah, I was in Jersey in 92 and I had this and what I'll do is I'll go to YouTube and I'll actually look up a bunch of, you know, people showing like how they're making it and all the different steps and I'll watch like four or five demos and then I'll try it and then uh, I'll fail. Yeah, try to reverse engineer it. <laughs> totally. Please. And then, but a lot of places, yeah, and I love that because if you could, you know, if you have a name, a title for a dish, there's so many people out there that are willing to like, once again, share their knowledge, share their skills and they'll like take you through step by step on exactly how to prepare it. So like, yeah, I want to encourage all y'all if you find something that you really like and you know, we're right here in Cave Junction, Oregon. We don't exactly have a wide variety of restaurants. Like, we don't have any kind of, uh, you know, we have a little bit of culture. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, if we wanted to, you know, have something super special that isn't available, we can really don't give up. Don't give up if it's not in the local store or they're not selling it at one of the restaurants. Go to YouTube and look it up and make it yourself because pretty sure we're going to have every ingredient available here that, you know, you can do. And it's sort of fun. It's amazing. It's an amazing trip to, like, cook your own food. And it's not that hard. And it's amazingly fresh to share food with people because, you know what? Everybody gets hungry. <laughs> so I, I love that. I love the fact that you're actually making food from scratch. That stokes me out. It's like, looks like we are coming down to 944. So I'm going to play another song. This is going to be, next one is Red Eye, which is definitely one of my favorites. I played the demo like so much because I dig it. Um, anything to add about this track before we let the listeners hear it? I wrote it really quickly, uh, like way quick, more quickly than I normally write a song. I wrote it about um, the idea of an unrequited love or just like, you know, like a crush that you never revealed sort of situation um, and just the idea of them leaving town or whatever and never expressing the feelings and the countdown and mm-hmm. just those ideas. I really love it. I feel for this song. And uh, this is the very first time I'm going to play the actual full force track here on Melting Space Dreams. Y'all, you've heard it before, but you've only heard the demo version. This version is like the whole shebang. And it's going to be coming out on Mike Raley's These Octagonal Eyes on Friday. So, my friends, check it out and enjoy. She's got the smile that burns your eyes She says she'll stay here for a while You wanna try to close your eyes But there's just no turning back You got 
had exactly three more days to figure out just what to say. She's got the smile that burns your eyes. She says she'll stay here for a while. You want to try, run and hide, but there's just no picking. She's got exactly one more night. She's been preparing to take flight. She'll stay here for a while You want to try to run and hide But there's just no getting out This is your last chance now Don't you know I love everything about that song. It's definitely my favorite one that I heard so far by this guy, Mike Grayley. We got him on the phone, and we're talking about stuff and things and music and food and school and everything, everything. So I am thinking that one of the things I'm really curious about are your inspirations to lay out music, you know, like how do you collect inspiration and you know, do you have a certain method or does it just like shoot at you from all directions? Um, I'm still experimenting with all sorts of ways, but I kind of have some patterns. Uh, I would say like a couple of the ways that I write are say like this song was very stream of consciousness where like I was just jamming on a riff for a while and I just kind of got into a groove and started, you know, singing just whatever on top of it. I think the oh no part came first um, and just kind of went for it. And then very soon, like, the line, she got, she's got the smile that burns your eyes, like, that just stuck in my head. I don't know how it happened, but I just ran with it and kind of wrote the song around it. But, you know, sometimes, like Lumberjack, I'll take a prompt. Uh, and this is probably the most precise and scientific method that I have so far. Um, but like the song Lumberjack and my future song Pont Enough were both written this way. I'll like literally write out a prompt or kind of a specific idea. So like I wrote on, uh, one of my notebook journals, I just said, um, concept, uh, log worker as metaphor for songwriting. And, uh, like I started writing down random ideas of like how that was, what that means and like how I would flesh that out. And I decided I don't know Jack about uh, lumberjacks. <laughs> so I uh, decided to look some stuff up and I actually pulled up a Wikipedia like page for terminology and I decided to like incorporate a whole bunch of imagery and stuff. So that was a whole bunch of fun to try to like paint a picture <laughs> in a way in a place that I had never really been before. 
Right. That was great. That's and really awesome. Also, I would say sometimes, uh, like House is Money People, the last song we're going to play, I literally was just walking around in my neighborhood, uh, or a neighborhood really next to mine, and uh, like I just started singing that tune to my head as I was being inspired by the houses around me, and I recorded on my phone and started singing around it and came up with like the verses that way. That's super cool. I love that you shared that, you know, you use what you had right there. You know, you weren't in a big studio or anything when you were throwing down your idea. You just grab your phone and, like, record a little memo, a voice memo of it. That's awesome. I do that a lot, too, when I'm inspired. I find myself, like, I'll wake up in the middle of, like, you know, my dreaming. I'll wake up with a song that's in the, on the top of my head, and I'll just, like, you know, shout it out and then go back to sleep again. Wonderful. And, and it's there in the morning. And honestly, it, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, go on. Go oh, I'm just going to say, like, I have to keep my phone by my bed because if I don't, I'll have that anxiety of, like, I'll be falling asleep and I'll have a, just, I mean, at something at the time feels like, oh, man, I have to write this down, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And if my phone isn't there, I'll literally just stress out. I don't have to, like, <laughs> get up to get my phone to write it down. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it's important to capture those things. Yeah, and I really love the imagery that you have in Lumberjack. I was listening to it today as I was getting ready to take off to the radio station and I was literally brushing my teeth and looking out my window and watching a Widowmaker kind of like sway back and forth. And I thought to myself, I'm like, I wonder if this dude ever actually even seen a Widowmaker. And uh, it was really funny that, you know, you shared that with me because I was curious. It didn't seem um, like. So what are you interpreting Widowmaker as? Well, a Widowmaker in my terms, being a girl who lives in the forest, is actually a branch that falls off, you know, a higher part of a tree, a rather large branch. And uh, it's sort of like just leaning on another branch, maybe in a kind of like a, a wishbone, kind of like wide, just kind of like teetering. And as the wind blows, it kind of like rocks it back and forth. And at one point, there's going to be a really big wind that blows, and that bad boy is going to fall. And if anybody's underneath there, they're going to be making a widow because they're going to be Okay, done yeah, for. we're on the same page, definitely. So I had never heard the term widowmaker ever, but I grew up in Arkansas, so, like, the forests were actually all around me, and it, this song kind of touches home in the way of, like, you know, I woke up around the forest in a way. Um, but, like, we definitely had dead limbs and actual, like, multiple dead trees that we had to get chopped and stuff. So I had seen them and been around them, but I never knew what they were called until I wrote this song. That's cool. Yeah, I was really curious about that. Because, yeah, I don't really know what... Uh, I, before I started doing interviews, I didn't really, like, you know, ask a lot of questions about what's going on. And I never really... Uh, I kind of knew for some reason. Maybe somebody might have told me when I was, like, first running through the forest here. Because I myself grew up, you know, pretty much between New York and New Jersey. And uh, <laughs> there were there were some widow makers there. And I might not have noticed them there was a little bit of forest when i first moved into new jersey but um yeah little by little they were all taken away and i didn't really get the full experience of that kind of life in until i landed here in southern oregon and uh, i really love the fact that yeah i'm surrounded by forest i literally live in the middle of the woods and uh, it stokes me out i dig it so like we're getting close to the end of the interview and I have like my little typical question that I need to ask you because I'm dying to know. What do you think about socks, my friend? Do you like socks? Do you not All like right. socks? Do you knit your own socks? Do you buy socks? Tell me about what's going on in your world with socks. I knew the sock question was coming. <laughs> so basically I'm wearing socks right now. I'm wearing no-show socks. Those are my favorite type of socks, except for when it's, like, super wintry, um, very cold, you know, like, outside or inside. Um, I'll wear, you know, like, super long socks, you know, like, traditional skater, like, almost that, no, not that high skis, but, uh, you know, like, covering most of the calf, and uh, those are great. But sometimes uh, I, I like to go no socks, you know, mm-hmm. like, I'm not always a socks guy, but I very much enjoy socks. So that means you don't wear socks when you go to sleep? No, I don't. <laughs> I overheat really, really quickly, and my feet are like one of the main exit areas of like my excess body heat. So it's like if I have my feet covered, I'll just like sweat the bed. 
<laughs> I hear it. Yeah, I'm kind of like the exact opposite. But I don't normally wear socks when I go to sleep. However, I always wear a hat. Like if somebody actually sees me without a hat on, score. You need to go buy yourself a lottery ticket. Cause like uh, I'm always I'm always wearing a hat. I always have one kind of some kind of hat on. You know, knit hat, felt hat. Hat, hat. I got a brim today, but like lately I've been wearing hat with like kitty cat ears for some reason. I don't even know why, but it's my new thing. But like, yeah, I always love to find out a little bit about people in their world, like what's going on. And do you have a special kind of material that you like your socks or you just don't really, you know, don't care about material? Just like standard cotton is my favorite. Um, I don't really like ones to try to get super duper fancy with like polyester and weird <laughs> blends and stuff. I like it to be nice and cotton. Yeah, totally cotton. It's predictable. <laughs> totally. I 100% agree. I like double thumbs up on cotton socks and cotton hats too. But like every once in a while, I'll like be okay with like a wool hat. Like have you had ever had anybody like knit you a hat or socks? Uh, I don't think so. No. Maybe I'll but, have to. Uh, I've had people like make me a jacket, or not like knit me one, but like I've had things presented to me, but more just like standard t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> Super but, rad. Like, crazy, like cool knitting. Right on. Well, I'm gonna have to knit you a hat. I like actually crochet. I don't knit. I won't lie. I'm a crocheter. I like to crochet stuff and. I've never tried to crochet socks, but I do hats, like, basically in my sleep. So I've been promising you, like, a package for two years. <laughs> I have, like, a radio station T-shirt for it in this package. I think I have a bead necklace and some hair dye. I've just been collecting stuff for, like, at least two years and trying to send it to you. But since the pandemic, I actually don't really go to the post office that often. So uh, I don't. But I'm going to make it a point. I'm going to crochet you this hat. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure... I wake up one day and make it to the post office before they close. It's so like, all right, we got two minutes to the top of the hour. I'm going to do like, make it official. You're tuned to KXCJLP 105.7 FM, serving the Illinois Valley, including O'Brien, Tequilma, Kirby, Selma, and Wonder, as well as the mythical state of Jefferson, which one day is going to be part of Idaho. Anyway, yeah. From the Collier Tunnel all the way up until Hayes Hill, you got KXCJ 105.7 FM on your radio dial. And, of course, universally at KXCJ.org. My name is Sophia Didwick. I have another two hours of melting space dreams, but we have one more track here with Mike Rally, and we're going to wind up this week's segment of Spiraling Inward. The song I have was my favorite new song next to the Red Eye song, which has been like my classic favorite song. But this one is called Houses, Money, and People. And we learned about, you know, how he made it, what was the inspiration for it. But do you have like a favorite verse or a favorite part of this song that you'd like to share with the people? Oh, um, Ah, geez, I just really, really love the verses. Those are my favorite part. Um, uh, the first verse is the one that I really just kind of wrote stream of consciousness while I was on the walk. So if I had to pick one part, that's my favorite. Super cool. Well, like, I am very thankful that we finally got to chat and learn a little bit about you because, yeah, I've been playing your songs forever. And the more I hear of your music, the more I love it and the more I want to support you as an artist. Like, yeah, we're going to play the song and take off. Would you like to uh, say anything in closing? Thank you so much for having me on. I can't believe this is the last edition of the show. I look forward to seeing uh, whatever else you come up with next and listening or tuning in however I can. Um, and, yeah, thank you so much for having me. My album comes out next Friday. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, I'll be checking it out. Um, do you have any kind of pre-save for that so people don't forget? Yeah. Um, if you go to my Instagram profile, so at Mike Raley, R-A-I-L-E-Y, um, you'll find uh, like a hyper follow, like a pre-save thing. You can also just find me on Spotify now and then just follow me and then you'll automatically see in your library when uh, Friday comes. 
Super cool. Well, I'm excited to get your music out into the world because you know what, Mike? The world needs your vibe out there. That is my personal opinion, and I, a lot of my listeners believe the same thing. Thanks again for, you know, sharing your music with me, sharing your time with me. And, yeah, I'll talk to you in the neighborhood, my friend. Bye. That sounds wonderful. Have a great night. Thank you for having me. Right on. My friends, this is a brand new song that you never got to hear yet. Only me. I've heard it. It is a world premiere debut from Mike Grayley. It's called Houses, Money, and People. Stuff we can kind of all relate to, right? The houses and the money and the people are older here. There's cracks all in the sidewalk and the mailbox is a showing where The city came to fix it but the neighbors all just stopped and stared They like things just the way they appear What's in your dreams? That's the Taking the outside in They've got a new investor So they're pouring cement again The people in their houses Think the change is a moral sin They like things just the way that they've been Love that track. That's Houses, Money, People by Mike Grayley. His new album, These Octagonal Eyes, are going to be out this Friday. That is March 4th. And I encourage you to get out there and listen to it and support that guy. Next track here in my melting space dreams is by...